Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all the puzzles that I completed for the month of January. So I've got some puzzles that featured on my Instagram account, uh, some that I did videos on, and also just some that I felt like doing. And if there's any puzzles in this video that you're curious about, make sure you check out the description box below because I'll have them all listed there for you. So I'm pretty happy with everything that I got done during January. I feel like there's quite an interesting mix, all different types of puzzles, uh, you know, larger piece counts, smaller ones, wooden, uh, plastic, yeah, quite a mix. And also I feel like I got through quite a decent amount of puzzles as well. So I guess without further ado, let's go through them all. As per usual, I've just grouped the puzzles based on their brand. And I actually have more puzzles here than will fit on this chair. So we'll go through this stack first and then we have a few more to go through after that. So the first puzzle here is from an Australian company called Journey or something. So this is one of their round puzzles. And let me try and see what it's called. It's also 1000 pieces. Um, it's called A Round Oz, ha ha. That's by the artist Maximilian Malone. Um, yeah, and so kind of comes in this cute little round box. This is the first time I've done a round puzzle. And yeah, it's just a really fun, colorful collage puzzle. Um, and so the name is A Round Oz, Oz being Australia. So it's actually uh, this collage of all these like fun, colorful, interesting sort of, I guess, flora and fauna. That's, I guess, mostly for the most part, Australian. So we've got lots of koalas hidden in here. Um, we've got some kangaroos, a platypus, a kookaburra. Um, we've got some like possums, another platypus, um, some bats butterflies, uh, lizards, all sorts of things. And then we've got heaps, a oh, little frog, that's cute. <laughs> and uh, yeah, lots of beautiful, colorful flowers, hibiscus and uh, I am terrible at flower breeds, species, whatever. <laughs> lots of colorful flowers. I'm not sure if all of these are strictly Australian, like we do have a mushroom here that's like your sort of classic red and white toadstool. And I'm not even sure if we have those in Australia, maybe. Um, but for the most part, it's very Australiana. But yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was just really fun and colorful and just packed with lots of detail. And yeah, just a really beautiful image and just fun, like discovering all the details as I put it together. And yeah, just really pretty. Um, even now I'm like remembering and seeing and remembering all these cute details like bees and like cockatoos and things. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. And then as for the quality, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, so, for the most part, whenever I've done a round puzzle, they've like tended to be more on the loose side. And I think that just seems to be, I guess, a manufacturing thing. Like there seems to be a bit of, I guess, it must be hard to make round puzzles that stay together tightly or firmly. But this wasn't the case with this one. It, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised that sections held together really well. The fit was quite good. There weren't like really any false fits. Um, although with this image being so detailed, it, even if there were like, it would be pretty easy to tell if something didn't go there. But yeah, I was quite surprised that, yeah, you like that the pieces, I'm very tongue tied, that the pieces are uh, held together really well. And I think, yeah, I even did a puzzle pickup for this. So yeah, that was really fun. Um, and then the pieces themselves, they have white paper backing. They're kind of like a, I guess, medium sturdy thickness. Um, most of the journey, well, I think all the journey of something puzzles that I've done all have a white paper backing, which isn't my favorite because I find that white paper backing tends to like be more prone to damage. But I think from memory, this one was like fine. Um, yeah, medium sturdy thickness. And the top was interesting. It was like quite smooth, but it looked like it had been varnished. So it was had a bit of gloss, but yeah, it had a real sort of varnish look about it. So quite interesting. Um, and yeah, not really any dust. So I think that's everything about this puzzle. Um, yeah safe to say I thoroughly enjoyed it and definitely would be happy to do more of their round puzzles. So yeah, really enjoyed this one. So next is this very cute and colorful puzzle by Sunus. And I actually did a video on this one. So I'll link that up in the cards above. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out. Um, yeah. And so the, there's only a section of the image on the front and sides of the puzzle, but the whole image is on the back. So this one's called Girls Room by the artist Row One, and it's 1000 pieces. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. It's definitely my kind of puzzle, very cutesy, kind of anime or manga style, I should say, like 
something you'd find in like uh, like Japanese sort of style comics, although the artist is actually South Korean. Um, but yeah, it's really cute. There's like little, it's basically like the name suggests, like a, I guess a really cute, like maybe teenage girls room. So I guess there's a couple girls here, maybe they're friends or sisters, I don't know, but one's sleeping and one's, I guess, like studying or watching videos or something. And there's this really cute little cat. And he has like cute, there's like heaps of cute colorful things like stuffed Pokemon toys and accessories, magazines, schoolwork, even like some berries, like that she seems to be eating for breakfast or something like that. Yeah, it's really just cute and very fantastical and yeah, definitely like a, a dream girl's bedroom. So yeah, I really love the artwork and I really enjoy all the Sunus artwork. It's always just really, uh, I really love that with these PMP or pick and pre-order puzzles, Sunus you know, uh, works with artists and collaborates and makes just, yeah, cool puzzles with beautiful artwork. So yeah, and this is no exception. And then the, so this is from the most recent uh, batch of pick and pre-order puzzles, not the ones that were recently featured on Instagram as they're still being made and shipped, but the ones before that. And so each batch, the quality, is always really good, but does vary a little bit um, because Sunus has been trying to sort of improve based on feedback and people's experience doing the puzzles, like try and improve the quality. But sometimes it's it's a bit of an experiment. So sometimes, you know, something will improve, but then that might affect something else. So I did have some definite positives with the quality of the pieces, but also a couple of cons. Um, so the pieces in this one were I'll pop this down um really like compared to previous students puzzles were super thick like chunky super chunky like probably some of the thickest puzzle pieces i've come across apart from like wooden puzzles so they were really thick and felt really nice to handle um and but they did have a paper backing but the paper backing had really cute uh like the i think it's on here no, it's not. Well, there's a little Sunus, like a girl's face logo. And that was printed on the back of the like backing paper, which actually wasn't white. It was sort of like a brown craft paper. So yeah, that was kind of a nice touch, sort of uh, putting like branding on the back of the paper. But I wasn't too sure about the paper because I'm always a bit iffy about paper backing on puzzles. Um, but for the most part, the paper wasn't too bad. It seemed to be in pretty good condition. However, I did find like uh, one or two kind of bent pieces or I think there was one piece I showed in the video and I did this ages ago so I'm like struggling to remember here um, but I think there was like a piece that had like a tab where the layers of the puzzle pieces sort of split a little bit so that's where I come to I guess my con of the puzzle pieces so although they were very thick and they fit together like beautifully and um, there were no false fits I realized when it came to taking the puzzle apart that it was actually a bit too tight. So taking apart the pieces was like quite a bit of effort. Like you had to sort of sit there popping each one out carefully to not like split the layers of each puzzle piece. So I think it was just made a little bit too tight, but yeah, I have spoken to Sunus and that's definitely something she's planning to address with this next batch that's currently being uh, manufactured. So hopefully, that won't be an issue in the next lot. Um, but apart from that, the pieces are, yeah, beautiful quality. The surface of the pieces was just lovely and smooth, but very matte, a bit like Magnolia puzzles, so which is one of my favorite brands. So yeah, I was very pleased with that. And there's like no puzzle dust. Um, oh, and everything's plastic free. Um, comes with a poster, comes with like postcard, um, like paper bags to put your puzzle pieces in. Yeah, really just overall a beautiful experience and just a really special puzzle. So yeah, super glad to have it in my collection despite a few little issues with the pieces. Um, but yeah, overall really loved it and just yeah, beautiful, beautiful image and really looking forward to doing uh, some of the others in my collection and the next batch of Sunus puzzles. So yeah, very fun. So uh, next we have a puzzle which is also from an Australian brand. So the brand is The Positive Piece um, and this puzzle is called Smoking Tigress. It's 1000 pieces and they've got a few different collections. This is collection number two, Balance. And this is by, they're very artist focused as well, uh, by Sharon Choi. And it comes in this very stylish box. Um, yeah, very designery. 
not the most practical box for putting pieces in. So yeah, we've got, I'm getting carried away here. So we've got the whole, a little image of the whole image on the front. And then we've got lovely colorful purple and stuff. And then we've got the whole image on the back and just a bit of stuff. And yeah, the reason why I say like the box isn't that practical is it's one of these like magnet ones. So it's all very nice and like pretty and beautiful packaging. And it comes in this lovely like canvas zipper bag, um, but it only has a small poster, but yeah, the box itself, mm, it's okay size, like maybe for a 500 piece, but for a 1000 piece, it's not the greatest to try and sort your pieces. So I did actually use a different box lid to put the pieces in. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm getting like sidetracked and putting things out of order. Um, not that it really matters. But yeah, I really liked the image. It's just a really gorgeous, like such an unusual and interesting image. So it's this beautiful like female tiger kind of stretching and like in, and in amongst the sort of wilderness. It's got these beautiful trees and lovely red sun and butterflies and these beautiful pink flowers and these grassy hills and stuff. So it's just very like, I don't know, just a lovely setting and this beautiful orange and black tiger, but the quirky, it's quite quirky and whimsical because the tiger's actually got a little pipe and has all these little puffs of smoke coming out. So a bit of a weird image. I haven't really seen anything quite like it, but also just a really beautiful image. And um, as you might notice, I guess coming up this from, well, looking at a few of the puzzles in this roundup, uh, I was on a bit of a tiger spree. So this is one of the, um, over on Instagram that is, I did a lot of tiger puzzles. So this is one of them. But yeah, I really, yeah, I really liked the image. I thought it was really lovely. And then as for the piece quality, um, I really was pleasantly surprised. So the pieces had a white paper backing. Again, I was really like, mm -mm, but they were in very, like the quality, the condition of the pieces was very good. I didn't really come across any damaged ones. And the piece thickness was sort of like medium thickness. There wasn't really any dust. Um, and interestingly, um, yeah, the pieces fit together really well. Um, and I don't think there were any false fits. So yeah, you could even like do a puzzle pickup with this. You could move sections around. So yeah, it was very like sort of, I don't know, I wasn't expecting the pieces to fit together so nicely. So yeah, I was quite impressed with that. Um, and the surface of the pieces was sort of like kind of just a smooth, papery kind of finish not particularly glossy maybe a bit of sheen um but yeah i think yeah that's pretty much all i have to say about this one just oh, opening the box um yeah just really like the artwork and uh yeah quite enjoyed the piece quality and and definitely love the quality of the packaging i think it's yeah very luxe definitely very giftable love it, that it comes with like this you know filled with positive vibes the positive piece yeah it's just really nice um, so definitely impressed with this brand, which is good because I have a bunch more of their puzzles in my collection to do. So yeah, been, yeah, really enjoyed it. So, hmm. so next I've got a couple here from another Australian brand. This time it's La La Land. And I actually did these two with my friend Tash. So we did them together. Um, we were actually practicing for, uh, the New, so New South Wales, uh, state Jigsaw Puzzle Championship, which happened in February. So we did these in January together to sort of practice because we also, um, they had announced that the puzzle sponsor for that uh, competition was actually gonna be La La Land. So we figured, well, let's do some together. Um, so this first one is called Field Trip and it's 500 pieces. And La La Land actually do not just puzzles, but homewares, but they're quite well known for just having very beautiful, intricate detailed designs, lots of like flowers and insects and birds and things like that. Um, and they, yeah, make really beautiful puzzles. Um, so this one is no exception. So yeah, it has these very pretty, I guess, moths or butterflies, maybe both, um, you know, this sort of brownie, goldy colored one and a lovely whitey purple one, very tropical ones over here, greens and aquas and oranges and reds and purples. And then the background is just like packed to the brim with like lots of flowers and leaves and even some mushrooms. So yeah, kind of interesting. So, and some of these flowers, I think pretty sure are like native to Australia or at least kind of grow here very well. And then, yeah, this beautiful ornate border, which we definitely left to last because that was the, probably one of the tricky parts. But yeah, this one was definitely a bit tricky because there's just so much going on. Um, and yeah, lots of little leaves and flowers and stuff. But yeah, we really enjoyed it. Very beautiful. Um, 
So yeah, definitely glad that I have this one in my collection and I got to actually do it because I have a lot of their puzzles still that I haven't done yet. Uh, um, but yeah, as for the quality, um, I kind of, I do like the quality, but there's a couple things that I guess are not my favorite. So one is that they have white paper backing, which I mean, there's so many puzzle brands that have a white paper backing these days. And I mean, the reason I don't like it as much as like having no backing is just because white paper or any paper backing tends to be more prone to damage or it's just one more thing on the puzzle piece that could get damaged. But whenever I've done uh, the La La Land puzzles, I haven't really had much um, of an issue with like quality control. So yeah, and the same with this, I don't think there were any damaged pieces. So yeah, very happy. Um, so that wasn't a problem. And these are like sort of medium to thick thickness and quite sturdy. Um, and for a 500 piece puzzle, they have like kind of normal size pieces. They're not like overly large or anything like that. And then the surface is actually kind of interesting. It's like, I feel like it's almost a little bit beveled on the edges. So like a little bit kind of curved, which is interesting. And they're quite, I guess, I guess, yeah, more on the glossy side, like smooth and glossy. So for me, I guess that's one con for me that um, depending on your lighting, like where you're doing your puzzle, you might get a bit of glare because the surface is a bit glossy. And then the other thing is, I guess, the piece fit. So although the pieces sort of fit nicely together in so much as that there's never really any false fits, well, not that I've found, um, but the piece, like the firmness of the fit is quite loose. So you do have to be a bit strategic when putting their puzzles together. So that is something we were keeping in mind when doing the, like their puzzles in the competition because you know uh, you don't have time to completely rebuild sections. You have to try and like build them where you want them or be able to slide them where you want. So yeah, um, so I guess that's my only other con is that yeah, the piece fits more on the loose or crumbly side. So you can't do a puzzle pickup or you can't really move sections around very easily. Um, but apart from that, I really like their puzzles, definitely a fan. And I think they always have the most stunning artwork. So yeah, I really love this one. And then the next one from them uh, was also one that I did with my friend. This is also 500 pieces and it's called Mexican Dream. And actually sort of features Frida Kahlo and they, Frida Kahlo seems to be a bit of an icon that they really enjoy including in a lot of their artwork. Um, so this is sort of one of them. And yeah, it's all these like I guess like the name, well, it's called Mexican Dream, but it seems to be like all these little, I guess, Mexican inspired uh, tiles. So yeah, it's all like, looks like porcelain tiles. Um, and each one's got, again, so much detail, like they have uh, like all these little flowers and shapes and patterns. And we've got some, a tile here that's, yeah, got Frida color in it with some lovely plants and beautiful flowers on her, in her hair and flowers in the background. Then we've got like the Virgin Mary and like some, you know, things that are like nature, like this pineapple and this bird and lemons and flowers and things. And then we have a few more like abstract things like this sort of eye and these like splodges. And um, yeah, so there's like heaps going on, but it's very intricate. Um, but this one wasn't too hard to do. We enjoyed it. It came together pretty quickly. It was pretty easy to figure out uh, when looking at a piece, which kind of section it went in. I guess it was almost a bit like doing lots of mini puzzles because you could like figure out which tile the pieces belong to more or less. But yeah, we really liked it. And again, just a beautiful puzzle. And just like the previous one, all the same good, uh, I guess, pros and cons of the quality. So yeah, really enjoyed this one as well. So next is this puzzle. Um, I think it's by the company Luckies, but it's actually sort of a collaboration. It says Print Club London times Luckies and it's 500 pieces and it's called Love is Power by the artist Jacqueline Colley and it's kind of a cool image. It's very like postery, um, has like, yeah, love is power and these big letters and has this tiger in this circle and lots of flowers and leaves. Um, and it was, it's a bit weird because the tiger face is like kind of a pixelated design, but the rest is not. But I mean, I guess it, I mean, I don't think it's like actually pixelated. I think, well, it is, but I think it was deliberately done that way, but sort of an interesting art choice. But either way, it's still just a really cool image and I really like it. Um, but it was very tricky to put together because it's just so much like, I guess, similar looking bits. So very tricky even for a 500 piece. Um, but yeah, I thought it looked really cool. But I actually had quite a few issues with the uh, quality of the pieces in this. So I, I mean, the packaging and stuff is fine, although a little bit small. 
to sort your pieces, but the pieces come in like a sort of cloth drawstring bag, so that's cool. But the reference picture is a bit small. So there's a few things with the packaging, but overall like very cool looking, has a blurb about the proce art process and the artist and stuff. But yeah, the pieces themselves were not great. Uh, probably, yes, yeah, I haven't like probably done a puzzle that I've disliked so much for quite a while. So, which is a pity because I like the image. So the pieces, it was very dusty. Like there's a lot of very woody cardboardy dust. Um, and the pieces had paper backing and there was actually quite a bit of damage to the paper backing. Like some of it was like a bit ripped or like stuck together or bent, things like that, which is why I tend to not be a fan of it. Um, although for the most part, a lot of puzzles I've done like have been fine with paper backing but in this case no um and yeah the pieces themselves were like i guess reasonably you know medium thickness and the top was just sort of a smooth papery finish and the fit itself like was actually probably more like the students one the pieces probably held together a bit too tight um so you had to sort of when like taking it apart you know be taking a bit more time to sort of like uh, carefully take the pieces apart so you don't like split the layers um, but yeah so something else apart from like the damage to like the white paper there was actually damage to the surface of some of the pieces like maybe two or three not that many but still it was a bit of a shame it seemed like I'd never really seen this before but it seemed like something had stuck on parts of those pieces and then been like pulled off and actually ripped off some of the surface like paper image so yeah that was kind of a pity and kind of odd I'm like what like what did that so yeah a bit of a shame that that happened kind of like yeah a bit quite disappointing and yeah just overall felt like the quality of the pieces was just quite low and not very like yeah not great um so unfortunately this one might end up getting decluttered um which is okay because I got it on like a very dis I got it for a very discounted price anyway but still uh you know it would have been nice if the quality matched the cool image. So yeah, bit of a pity, but yeah, so a bit sad. And then, okay, we've got a few more here and then we will get to the next pile. Uh, what do we do next? Okay, this one. Okay, we've got, speaking, I guess, of puzzle quality that I'm not too keen on. This is a Seiko puzzle and it's 750 pieces. And you know what? I don't know what it's called because Seiko never seemed to name put a name on their puzzles, but it's part of the Groovy Animals series and there's a whole bunch of different animals. But I guess this one's just called Tiger or something like that. But yeah, I really like the image, very bright and cheery and colorful, very like festive. And yeah, really just a really cool eye-catching image. So I really had fun putting this one together. And it was kind of a little bit tricky actually, because we have like a symmetrical design here. So yeah, kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I find that uh, the Seiko pieces are very like thin. They have, uh, they don't have a paper backing, thankfully. So it's just plain cardboard, but they're very thin and a bit like more soft and bendy. Um, thankfully the actual, like, I guess, quality of these in terms of like damage was very low. I didn't really see any damaged pieces or the pieces seemed to be in actually very good pristine condition. So I was very impressed with that. Um, but yeah, I don't like how thin the pieces are. And also they're just, uh, well, the surface is kind of just a smooth papery surface, not particularly glossy, but there's a little bit of sheen, but it's not too, too bad, I guess, depending on your lighting. But the one thing that really, really annoyed me more so than the thinness of the pieces is that it has such a loose crumbly fit. So um, you can definitely, you definitely can't pick up sections or do a puzzle pick up with these, but which is fine. But the thing that bugged me the most was like any time I'd like go to put a piece in and then go, oh, it doesn't fit there and go to move it. If it got caught a little bit on any surrounding pieces, it would just, that's my cat having a weird meltdown. Um, yeah, if you uh, like bumped any of the surrounding pieces or got your piece stuck on any of the surrounding pieces, it would just mess up that whole section and pull everything apart, like just utter puzzle chaos. Um, and yeah and then you'd have to like rebuild that section so it's so frustrating or if like you're clumsy like me and you bump your puzzles like yeah not great so i really need to keep that in mind because i am such a sucker i always like get suckered in by the cute 
and fun uh, like images that Seiko have, but I'm like, no, I get really annoyed by their quality. Stop buying their puzzles. Yeah, so lovely image, really like fun puzzle series, but yeah, I really like don't like the quality at all. Um, and then next is a Buffalo Games one, um, another tiger because again, I was on a tiger, tiger kick. So this one is 500 pieces and it's part of the, their amazing nature range. It's called Hello Tiger. And again, this is just a really fun, cute, colorful one, like kind of looks a bit etched or screen printed and just this colorful tiger, it says hello. Yeah, I really enjoyed the image. It's just so cute and friendly and bubbly and whimsical and all those fun things. So yeah, I really enjoyed the image and just a yeah, really cheery, colorful one to put together. Um, and then I always find like the Buffalo games, they're not my favorite puzzles ever. And then I definitely, I guess I just feel mediocre about them. I feel like they're a good middle of the range type of like puzzle piece, I guess. So they have a cardboard backing. They're kind of like a thin to medium thickness, definitely thicker than Seiko, that's for sure. Um, and they usually have a bit of a, like they have a, usually have a smooth top, a little bit shiny glossy. So again, it can be a bit of a problem depending on your lighting. Um, not too much dust or like really very little dust actually. Um, but I feel like their pieces fit together reasonably well. Sometimes they have some quirky, in interesting piece shapes, like some weird little zigzag ones, which make things a bit more interesting. And they often come with a poster, not always. Sometimes that's a bit inconsistent. This one did. Um, and yeah, I just feel like their puzzle pieces are pretty, pretty decent. Like I don't seem to, oh, sometimes you get false fits, but they seem to fit together fairly well. Um, I don't know uh, uh, whether you could do a puzzle pickup. That's another question. I've never really attempted one with their puzzles. Um, but sometimes I feel like you can pick up sections if you're gentle and sometimes they seem crumbly. So it's a bit hit and miss, but I feel like they definitely stay together better, a lot better than Seiko. So yeah, and they always have like really great images and lots of different like uh, sizes, like piece counts available. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I just overall feel like Buffalo Games is a nice, yeah, middle of the range kind of puzzle in terms of quality and stuff. So, and I guess price point, they're pretty, well, maybe not so much in Australia, but in, I guess, North America, they're pretty affordable from what I've heard. Very, they have some really good sales and stuff. Um, anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, cute tiger, loved it, had fun, enjoyed the quality. Uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. And then the last ones we have here from this pile are all Ravensburger. So I've got two here, but I've actually got an invisible one I'm gonna briefly talk about. So um, I actually did a video on this one, which I'll pop up here. And it was the Ravensburger 500 pieces. Let's see if I can remember, cute dogs in the garden. And the video I did was actually a collaboration video with uh, some other YouTube puzzlers where we did the battle of the YouTube uh, puzzlers uh, number one, I guess, video where we all did the same puzzle and we did, uh, we, we basically tried to speed puzzle it, like do it as fast as we could. And then we didn't tell each other uh, what our times were. And then we didn't get to find out our times until we all launched our videos on the same day and time. And then we just watched each other's videos and it was, yeah, really fun. And uh, we did the videos as premiere videos, which meant we could like live chat with some of you um, before the video started. So yeah, that was really good fun. And it was just fun to watch everyone, uh, like see how everyone attempted and strategized with the same puzzle. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. Um, anyway, so for that puzzle, yeah, it was like these cute, like the name um, suggests. I mean, there'll be a picture up here. Yeah, these cute, like, I guess, like Labradors or Golden Retrievers, cute dogs like in this sort of garden park setting. There was like a bicycle and lots of flowers. And I think there was a little lake. <laughs> I'm trying to like remember, but yeah. And there was like a fence and stuff. So there was lots of details going on. Um, there were definitely some easier bits of the puzzle and then some tricky bits. Um, yeah, so that was like, it wasn't really my style. I wouldn't normally, that wouldn't normally be the sort of type of image I'd go for, but I had fun doing it as part of like this sort of you know, YouTube speed puzzling battle, this collaboration, I thought it was like good fun to do it. So yeah, for that, I yeah enjoyed it. And 
Um, and the reason why I don't have it anymore is because I actually passed it on to another puzzler in Sydney so she could attempt um, doing the puzzle herself and time herself doing it. So yeah, it was pretty cool. I, that, I thought that was a fun thing to do to, you know, get more use out of the puzzle and also let someone else have a go at it and speed puzzle it for themselves. Um, yeah, and then as for the Ravensburger quality, I think a lot of you probably have done Ravensburger before, but yeah, they always have like a blue cardboard backing and like a nice sort of medium to thick thickness. Um, and they tend, the pieces tend to sort of hold together fairly well. Uh, sometimes I find it not always completely consistent. Sometimes I find the pieces hold together more firmly than others, just depending on the puzzle. Um, but for the most part, like they hold together pretty nicely, but it's not a super tight fit. So sometimes you can move sections around, sometimes you can't uh, hit and miss. Um, and then the surface of the puzzles for Ravensburger is usually kind of interesting. I find them to be a little bit more puffy, like not completely flat, so a little bit bubbly or puffy. Um, like the pieces were sitting flat, but the surface itself is not like completely like flush or smooth. It has a bit of like, I guess, yeah, like puffiness to it. It's sort of an odd thing to say, but yeah, I find that they have, they're a bit interesting like that. Um, and they're usually not too glossy, like more on the matte side, but a little bit of sheen. Um, oh, and there's always heaps of dust. <laughs> that seems to be a bit of a sig signature um, thing with Ravensburger, but you know, they always do have pretty good quality and a whole like awesome range of images to choose from and different sizes and stuff. Um, yeah, so for what it was and for the event, I enjoyed it, but it wouldn't normally be a sort of image that I would choose. Um, so yeah, but yeah, enjoyed it for what it was. And then the next two I have here are ones I actually did in preparation for that video, a bit of speed puzzling practice, but also by Ravensburger and they're both 500 pieces. So this one is called Waterlands and it's part of the I Like Bird series by the artist. Um, no, I don't know. Well, it's just, I think the artist or the artwork is just called I Like Birds, so it doesn't really say the artist's name. Um, anyway, but yeah, it's called Waterlands and it's this like, uh, I guess, birdy water scene. So I guess there's all these like ducks and other like water bird type creatures that are all like, uh, yeah, just enjoying their day out in the, uh, the local pond or lake. So it's got all these like reeds and um, yeah, all this like lovely water and lily pads with a frog and the sun's out and yeah, and there's birds flying up here too. But what's interesting is it's very like all made up of like sort of geometric simple shapes and lines and patterns and stuff. So all the reeds are like these like, you know, just solid colored green lines and brown bits. And um, yeah, there's not like heaps of shading. It's sort of, yeah, very solid colors. But yeah, this was definitely a bit tricky, especially because there's um, some birds have like a bit of a reflection in the water. So there were lots of bits that looked very similar and especially like the tails of some of the ducks looked very similar. And there's a lot of like very, again, similar colors going on amongst these birds, like the browns and oranges and whites and stuff and grays. And yeah, the reeds were a bit tricky as well. So yeah, definitely not an easy puzzle to put together. Um, or I mean like doable, but still a bit more on the tricky side. So. I don't know if it was a great one to practice with, but I guess any puzzle is still practice. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I think it's kind of cute, a bit whimsical. And yeah, same, I guess, decent quality as the other one I did. So yeah, definitely yeah, enjoyed that one. My stack here is getting <laughs> a little bit precarious, but we're nearly done for the uh, this lot of puzzles. And then the last Ravensburger I did in January is again a 500 piece one and it's called Manatee Moments by Robert Johnson. And um, yeah, this is sort of, I guess, kind of odd. I, this wouldn't normally be my style. Like it's kind of painterly and a very like kind of realistic image, but I don't know, there's something about it that drew me to it. And I did quite enjoy putting it together, even though I was speed puzzling it. It was definitely tricky as well though. Um, but yeah, I really, I guess I just like the sort of pink birds and this ibis, or we call them bin chickens here. We have a lot of these in Australia. Um, yeah, and just like the fish and the manatees and stuff. So it's just, and just the sky is very pretty. So there's like a lot of beautiful sort of details in this one. But yeah, it was definitely 
tricky or well, some parts were the sky was pretty easy to put together and the pink birds and that but yeah definitely the leaves were pretty tricky and the water and the manatees were quite time consuming so definitely didn't have a great time like as in uh, when it came to speed puzzling it my time was not <laughs> great uh, but again still practice so you know, practice makes perfect better I don't know not perfect but <laughs> Practice is something, um, but yeah, I still really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, I'm a, uh, I don't know. I have kind of mixed feelings about this one now. I'm like, I'm not quite sure why I liked it so much initially, but and now that I've done it, I feel like the magic's worn off a bit, but I still enjoyed it. And yeah, and the quality was just as good as the other two. So yeah, happy with that. Um, but who knows, maybe I'll pass it on in the next declutter. I'm not too sure, but either way, still enjoyed it for what it was and it was good puzzle practice so there we go so that's it for this stack so let's look at the last lot of puzzles okay so let's go through the last lot of puzzles it's kind of a interesting odd mix here so the first one is a wooden puzzle um, which is by uni dragon it's called inspiring unicorn and this is uh, was their king size which is 313 pieces and yeah it's just a stunning colorful uh, pastel rainbow fantastical puzzle uh, you can probably tell why I like it because this definitely appeals to me so pretty and rainbow and pink and yeah very yeah very pretty very fantastical um, and yeah all their puzzles come with like not only sort of interesting shape pieces but lots of whimsy pieces as well so there were like there was really an abundance in this one there were just so many um, and there were of course lots of very cute little mini unicorn shaped pieces in different poses um, and like crystals and love hearts and stars and things like that but there were also just really cute shapes as well so they had like little candy like lollipops and like wrapped lollies and um, there was like even like teddy bears and things like that like a lot of sort of uh, childhood nostalgic kind of like shapes yeah very cute and pretty and then when I flipped it over I discovered that some of the pieces then formed to make like kind of almost like a mini puzzle within the puzzle so there was like another sort of unicorn within it and like a castle in the sky so yeah kind of interesting that very like uh, designed in such a clever clever way like not just a shape with like you know fun cut out shapes in it but like uh, just designed so well that you know uh, it makes up other pictures and mini puzzles within it so yeah really clever I don't know how they do it you know puzzle design magic but yeah really enjoyed it um, just thought it was just beautifully done um, and there I can never remember the thickness what the thickness of the pieces is but it's definitely uh, yeah a nice chunky thickness and uh, yeah very sturdy and yeah the pieces were all yeah beautifully made really good quality I think the only slight con was so because these puzzles are like cut out with laser sometimes wooden puzzles do tend to have a bit of like scorching from the laser and I did find that on a little bit like occurring a little bit on some of the pieces but it was pretty minor pretty subtle um, but yeah for the most part yeah everything was yeah just beautifully made so really enjoyed it and uh, yeah definitely looking forward to doing more of their puzzles and then what do I do next uh, okay these ones okay so this is a bit complicated so I've got this blue box here which shows you nothing um, basically this is from the brand Pintu and they are a Taiwanese brand and they do plastic puzzles and so uh, if you saw I think my previous or the one before that haul I did sort of show these um, and so what this one was uh, it was actually three lots of 300 piece puzzles and I think it was called kitchen cats and so most of their puzzles if it's like just a single puzzle will have the image on the front but this one didn't but it did ugh, let's see if I can get this open it did have like three like separate bags of mini puzzle pieces and then it had a little postcard reference picture of each of these little cat scenes in the kitchen so very very cute um, but yeah I guess it would have been nice to maybe have slightly bigger pictures because there's quite a bit of detail in them but I guess they're only 300 pieces but anyway so that's the reference pictures it came with instead of having a picture on the box but I've actually since put these together which I'll show you so I just thought I'd show you the packaging let's pop that down there 
So here, uh, I've got all three puzzles put together and I've actually, uh, I end up ordering separate frames which I've put on as well. So uh, I don't know, they don't really have names. So I'll just, I guess I'll just show you each one. Um, so there's this very cute one. Um, yeah, this little orange kitty cat and it has a very cute little bib with the love heart. Just uh, looks like it might have a little saucer of milk and just in a very sort of old fashioned traditional looking kitchen with like a big range, like a cooking, what do you call it? Like a stove top, I guess, with all these beautiful tiles, like blue and white tiles and then jugs and a clock and like this cute little pig up here. Yeah, very like pretty and cute. And it sort of looks like it's a pencil illustration. So yeah, it's quite a large puzzle for 300 pieces. But um, although that being said, the pieces are quite like tiny. They're quite on the small side, like definitely a lot smaller than um, just sort of like normal, I guess, standard sort of piece shape or piece size, I should say. And yeah, there's quite a variety of like piece shapes in here. So the thing with the Pinchy puzzles, which I should probably get to, is they are plastic puzzles. And so the pieces are like a quite a hard plastic um, and they just snap together. So the fit is like extremely tight. Um, like if I didn't have the frame in here, I could like wave it around as like a single board. Like there's no loose pieces at all. You can, it's like becomes one solid sheet basically. And they really are designed to display. Like you could undo them, but it's like pretty tough to undo them. So they're definitely uh, kind of marketed as like a display piece, especially because Pintu also makes these lightweight plastic frames, which also have like the little holes so you can like hook them onto stuff or um, yeah, and they come in a range of colors. So it didn't come with the frames. I did buy those separately. And um, so far, these are the only frames I've bought, even though I've got a few other Pintu puzzles in my collection, but I just thought I'd try them out. And I think they work pretty well. Don't know where I'm gonna put them, not in my kitchen because I don't actually have any wall space in my kitchen. It's just cabinets and tiles. So it's not really like a lot of space. So I'm not sure where they're gonna end up, um, but I think they look really cute. I guess you could hang them on some, on the wall or lean them against the wall, whatever you want. But yeah, really interesting. And there's no glass or anything over this because apparently you can just wipe it clean or rinse it like it's kind of waterproof. I mean, it's just plastic after all, so it's not gonna damage the pieces. Yeah, so pretty interesting. Um, and I don't normally keep my puzzles together when I'm done, so this is a bit of a different thing for me. I'm not really used to this, but kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's been fun and interesting to sort of try it out. So yeah, that's that, I don't know, cat number one in the kitchen. I don't know what they're all called. And then I'll just pop it there. Um, this kitty cat here uh, is looking very cute. Another sort of ginger and white kitty cat uh, also sitting on a kitchen bench, just like my ginger and white kitty cat. She likes to sit on the kitchen bench and look out the window and uh, admire anyone's cooking and wishing for snacks. <laughs> this kitty is very lucky. It's got a big block of cheese here and uh, yeah, some strawberries, which it probably doesn't care about and some bread. But yeah, it's on the bench and there's like different bits of food and um, what else? We've got some flowers and a vase and uh, it's sort of got a lot of detail in the background, which is why I was saying like the, it'd be good if the reference pictures were a bit bigger because there's like a lot going on here, like utensils and things and kitchen cupboards and like, you know, baskets of food and yeah, all sorts of sort of kitcheny stuff. But yeah, again, very cute. Um, these weren't too difficult to put together. like. I don't know how long they took. Definitely less than an hour for each one, like maybe 40 minutes, half an hour, kind of depended on the image, I guess. But yeah, just a really cute image. Um, yeah. And again, same quality. Um, and I end up with putting the frame on it. So yeah, happy with that one as well. And then this last one, we've got not an orange kitty. We have, I guess, is it like Siamese, Burmese? Definitely a different breed. And yeah, it's uh, in quite a colorful kitchen. It's like got a splash back with all these like colorful tiles and there's all these interesting pots and pans and things hanging from up top here. And then looks like someone's got recipe books out on the kitchen counter. And yeah, again, lots of little details like a bowl of fruit and flowers and ornate like jugs and things. And 
just I guess kitchen knickknacks so yeah kind of another very cute kind of whimsical very lovely image I think they're all just really uh, illustrated in such a really lovely whimsical kind of way yeah just very pretty so yeah definitely happy to do them again no idea where they're going in my house whether they're going to be put on display or not or I don't know but it was sort of fun to do them and try out this brand and so definitely looking forward to doing other puzzles from this brand but again I'm not really <laughs> feel a bit uncertain of where they're going to end up in my house like <laughs> I only have so much room to display image uh, like pictures so we'll see I don't know if I'm going to get frames for all of them but I just thought it'd be interesting to try it for these and these are very lightweight frames and they're just plastic like a matte brushed kind of plastic so yeah interesting all right so we only have a few more left ah, ah, okay uh we'll do these three Ugh. so i got these micro puzzles a while ago and i finally uh i've done a couple but i finally did these three so uh, okay we'll go don't roll off the table so they're only 150 pieces each and they have teeny tiny cute little pieces in these test tubes and they have all sorts of like fun colorful designs or different yeah for all different tastes and this one's called uh, I think it's Schmetterling which is like the German word for butterflies and it's yeah this black background with all these colorful neon yeah pretty kind of watercolor looking butterflies so very fun one to do um, yeah I really enjoyed it I thought it was really cute um, so these are definitely kind of like a puzzle snack they don't take too long to do although it really just depends on the image but they are very fiddly so um, the pieces themselves are like they are kind of thick but they're very tiny so they can be a little bit hard to pick up sometimes especially with like thick fake nail like I've got gel nails so sometimes they're a little bit hard to pick up so sometimes like tweezers could help um, and they're also very tiny so you should wear your glasses when you're doing them like me um, but yeah interestingly they have like a colored backing and each one has like a different color like this is sort of a tealy blue and it's like these, this one's green this one's orange so that's kind of fun that they make the reverse side a color and it's different for each puzzle um, and then as for the like pieces themselves like I said they're sort of like thick have a colored back and the top is just sort of smooth papery but it is a little bit on the shiny side so you might have some problems with glare or sheen depending on your lighting um, and then all the pieces are pretty much, I mean, except for edge pieces, of course, they're all the same. They're all just two tabs. So there's not a lot of variety. And I have found that depending on what design you're doing, you can get false fits for sure. Like even in this one, there was a bit of some false fits going on because I did have some similar colored butterflies throughout. Um, so it ended up being a little bit tricky. Um, and then the piece fit itself is a little bit, I find, so, uh, it's sort of hit and miss sometimes it's a bit crumbly sometimes they stay together I mean I have actually done a video on these which I'll link up here um, and I think I did actually do a little mini puzzle pickup in that one and it was fairly successful I think I can't remember it was ages ago <laughs> you can watch the video and maybe I can watch it too and find out all over again um, but yeah so not like I think they tend to be more on the crumbly side but I, it's, again it's a bit hit and miss but you know what at the end of the day it doesn't matter they're only 150 pieces they are just a little fun quick puzzle snack something to keep on your desk or do while you're traveling or something like that so you know they never it doesn't matter if they're like I mean for me personally they don't have to be most perfect quality they just have to get the job done and they're just a bit of fun so yeah so yeah enjoyed that one very cute I'll just pop it there no rolling off the table you and then yeah I did these other two which kind of a similar theme this one was called I think it was mammoth fun and yeah it's like got this woolly mammoth here but it's like frozen in its ice cube and then it's surrounded by um, all these like I guess dinosaur bones and fossils and uh, leaves and yeah sort of prehistoric looking plants and things and again this one was definitely a bit of a tricky one to put together as well just because there were some repeating elements like some of the bones and plants and stuff were sort of repeated around or very similar looking in different spots so I definitely remember having a bit of finding this one a little bit tricky as well um, but yeah it was still good fun the image is very like cute and cartoony and just definitely good for any sort of dinosaur 
or animal lover, I guess. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I like that the yeah backing on this one is like this sort of forest green. So yeah, quite fun. But yeah, I thought that was really cute. And then the last one I did from Micro Puzzles was this one was quite tricky actually. So it's got a lovely orange back on this one. But yeah, this one's a bit more of a realistic style where it's got like these this kind of very yellow, scary looking dinosaur eye peeking through. Well, I guess it's a green dinosaur. You can sort of see some of the, like I guess, skin of the dinosaur or scales peeking through all these green ferns. And then we've got like dinosaur eggs and sort of fossilized, fossilized footprints. And like, again, lots of like plants and yeah, a bit similar to the mammoth one in theme, I guess. But yeah, quite realistically drawn. But this one was very tricky because it's got a lot of repeated elements um, and a lot of very fine details. Um, so I definitely had some false fits for this one for sure. And it took me a while to figure it all out, but I got there in the end. But still overall good fun and a really fun image. So yeah, I've been really enjoying these. I don't often get like such small piece counts, but I think they're just good fun every now and then. They also make great gifts and good like stocking stuffers and that sort of thing. And yeah, just good if you want to have a little puzzle or a few puzzles on your desk at work, something like that. Yeah, so overall good fun. Um, and yeah, I think great for what they are. So that brings me to I'm running out of table space here. The very last puzzle. Uh, okay, how do I do this? It's a bit awkward. So hmm, I'll show you the box first because that's small. So it came in this red box. Um, so this is by the brand Yuyoji and it's a Chinese based brand. And this, they make not just puzzles, but they sort of make, I guess, like display artwork type things like tapestries and like other artworks hang on your wall. And even these, their puzzles, they're all acrylic and are sort of uh, designed to be put in a frame, which I have done here and put on display. So they're definitely designed to be like a collectible art piece. Um, they're not really, I guess, a bit like the Pintu. They're not really, uh, although you can undo it pretty easily. They're not exactly designed to be like a normal puzzle that you do over and over again. It's more like once you've done it, you'd put it on display. Um, so this one, okay, can I remember the name? I think it's written on here somewhere. <laughs> Let me find out. Um, no, I think it's called In Me, the Tiger. Hang on. Ah, oh, here we go. In Me, the Tiger Sniffs the Rose. So the most bizarre name. But yeah, it's this beautiful tiger image. And so it all came in this uh, big red box, uh, which is quite sturdy. It did have a lid, but I'm currently using the lid to uh, sort another puzzle because it's been very handy. Since I'm not undoing the puzzle and putting it back in, I thought I can reuse the, the box, parts of the box. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's very, very fancy, um, like opening this up. So it came with obviously the puzzle, which actually came in like a nice little, like resealable Ziploc bag. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then, yeah, it came with this beautiful, like, this is the reference picture. It's so interesting. So it came with this scarf, but it's like, like the sort of silky, I don't know if it is silk, but this sort of silky fabric little scarf reference picture, um, which is just really pretty and beautiful, very different. I've never seen a puzzle sort of packaged like this or with a reference picture like this. It's kind of quirky though, because it actually has like, if you look carefully at it, it's actually got the little outlines of all the puzzle pieces printed onto the image. So I almost wish it didn't because then you could kind of use it more as like a scarf, like a hair tie or a bag tie or something afterwards but eh, kind of cool like I've never seen this before and it's just makes it feel very luxurious so yes it came with this lovely little I guess yeah scarf reference picture so that was kind of interesting and then it came with like yeah this like red envelope and then inside this is like quite elaborate was like a sort of kind of a little yeah collectible postcard of it not the whole image sort of like part of the image and then it came with, oh, that's right. It's got like all the product list and what to do if you have missing pieces. So a bit of more information about the puzzle. And then it had this like little like perspex or acrylic cutout plaque. And then um, one side is sort of like got the branding and um, shows you some other puzzles in the series. 
and so that's the one I have. And by the way, I forgot to mention this one's actually like a panoramic puzzle, and I think it's 310 pieces. Um, and did I say it's acrylic? It's acrylic. <laughs> um, and then this side is like this sort of collectible plaque. So it says like number um, 1,000 out of, no, number 13 out of 1,000. So it's limited to 1,000. Has like all about it, like the image, and then all about the artwork and like the meaning of like the tiger and everything. And yeah, so kind of really interesting. And then it also came, with, it never ends. It came with this, which I haven't actually opened, this like thick little base so you can actually like if you wanted like if you're like a true art collector you could like stand your little plaque in there and then have that on display next to your puzzle and i forgot to mention this was actually gifted to me by yoji so yeah very like really interesting and cool i've never really quite seen anything like it so yeah really intricate a lot going on here um and now i'm going to actually show you the puzzle so the puzzle itself like it came with all that However, they did also send me like an optional frame. So they don't come with a frame, but they sort of suggest like, you know, if you want to display it, you might want to get one of their Perspex frames. So let me move this back to the seat. Ugh. And um, let's see if I can like do this. Whew. Okay, it's kind of heavy. Ugh. So yeah, hopefully you can see this okay and it's not going to be too reflective, but this is the finished puzzle. So yeah, it's not like, I mean, it's big, but it's not that big. And this is the frame they sent. So it comes with like, so it's Perspex and it's actually like three layers and it has these little feet here. So that way you can actually, so you can't really put it on the wall. I guess you could if you wanted, but it's quite heavy. So it's got these little feet. So you can kind of, hopefully you can see that. You can rest it. So yeah, I'm actually tempted to like, well, one of these days redo my, my display behind me and actually have this as one of the pieces on there. Um, but yeah, so I thought it was just all really interesting. Anyway, I'm waffling. Anyway, the frame is like three pieces. So there's like a base, then like kind of almost like a frame that sits in there and you can actually build the puzzle inside that. And then you put, when you finish, you can put the top on and sort of put all the screws in and the feet. So yeah, really cool. I have to say though, Perspex, uh, it did come with like a plastic, like coating that you peel off, which is good because Perspex like after this, I'm gonna to have to clean it, leaves like your fingerprints get left all over it and it gets like any cat hair will stick to it. It gets very static. So like fluff, dust, cat hair, fingerprints, everything sticks to it. So it's really annoying to clean. So like once you've cleaned it, you're like, don't touch it. So yeah, it's uh, not great for perfectionists and fussy people like me, <laughs> but yeah but it still looks really cool. Yeah, so I think this is a really cool display piece. Anyway, uh, so much waffling, but there's a lot to say about this puzzle, I feel like. Um, yeah, the image itself, I just think is absolutely stunning. Um, I really, really love it. I think it's so eye-catching. I love this tiger in the middle, where it does seem to be like sniffing the air and all the flowers. And it's got these beautiful sort of like ribbons, like these teal, pale blue ribbons, and then these beautiful like, bursting blooming flowers and little vines and yeah just stunning um and i love like the texture of the tiger's fur you probably can't see this hopefully i've got an image up here if it fits but yeah but yeah just really beautiful um and yeah and it was really interesting doing an acrylic puzzle so this is my first time doing one so the pieces almost felt like glass and then like if I dropped the pieces on each other this it sounded like glass but it's definitely acrylic um, but yeah just really beautiful and the pieces are like clear but it's got this beautiful vibrant printing on top so it almost sort of looked like little gems or jewels very yeah really really beautiful and as you can see it's very bright and vivid um, I've actually got this on Instagram so you can always go check that out if you want and I've got like a, a reel that I did over there so yeah, if you want to see more of this because at the moment i'm not sure if you can actually see me see the image clearly because it might be reflecting so i apologize if it is um but yeah uh so yeah it was very interesting putting it together but for me um i found that the pieces had a very loose fit so it felt more like doing a wooden puzzle because it had that sort of real looseness to it um, and although there are like varied piece shapes here like it's not all just two tabs there's like quite a lot of shapes I did have, I guess my biggest issue with, with this puzzle is that there were lots of false fits 
And as you can see, there's like kind of some repeating elements amongst like the flowers and sort of leafy vine bits. And so I actually spent quite a bit of time, even though this is only like what, 310 pieces, rearranging, I think it was like some of the corner or edge sections where there's like a lot of very similar looking like, like these flowers here and over here are very similar looking. And so I had pieces in the wrong spot. Um, and yeah, so I spent a really long time puzzling the puzzle, like rearranging bits until I finally figured out the right sort of order. So that was a little bit frustrating um, and just something I feel like they should keep in mind. But that being said, because it's designed to be a display piece, you're probably only putting the puzzle together once. So maybe it's like not such a big deal. I don't know. I guess it really depends on you. And yeah, I think if I had to do it, if it was a puzzle I was going to do over and over again, it would be pretty annoying. But since it was only 310 pieces and I'm probably going to keep it in this frame, I know, shocking me, again, having all these puzzles to display. Who am I? It's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, then maybe it's not such a big problem. And then I guess the, ugh, let's pop this down because it's like, it's actually quite heavy. Um, the only other th issue I had was, so I don't, the top of the box, I have it elsewhere. So the box itself is actually nice and sturdy. And the top of the box is also red, but it has like, instead of having an image, it doesn't have an image of the actual puzzle image. It just had like this green puzzle piece pattern. So of course, when I showed that on Instagram, everyone assumed I was doing like a solid green puzzle. So I did actually give feedback to the company telling them like, maybe it'd be good to put the artwork of the puzzle on the box because it's a bit confusing and misleading as to what's in it. And also why not show more of the beautiful artwork? Like it's so stunning. Um, so yeah, I guess that's my only complaints is put an image on the box and um, maybe address false fits or at least make a design that's going to be less symmetrical so you have less issues with false fits, I guess. Anyway, I think I have waffled on long enough. Um, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video that uh, I'm going to quickly at the end share with you my favorite and least favorite puzzles for the month of January. So let's do that now. Okay, so let's quickly uh, talk about the least favorite and favorite puzzles of the month. So least favorite was actually very easy. It was this, uh, what is it? Love is Power Print Club London by Lucky's puzzle. Even though I really loved the image, I thought it was really cool. Um, despite being a bit challenging to put together, I just was really disappointed with the quality. Um, you know, I just felt like this puzzle had so much potential and they were obviously trying to make it sort of like luxe because it came in nice packaging and came in like the fabric drawstring bag and was very arty. But I just felt like the puzzle pieces, like the quality of the pieces themselves just really lacked and really let the whole thing down. So yeah, really disappointed. And I just don't think I'll ever do this puzzle again. I think it's actually gonna get decluttered in the next declutter um, just because I found it so frustrating to put together and found the quality very disappointing and there's just a lot of damaged pieces and yeah, so you, I, I'm glad it was only like, it was really discounted when I got it because if I paid full price, I'd be pretty upset with the quality and especially like having um, damage to the white paper backing is one thing because at least it's like on the bottom of the puzzle, but the fact that there was like ripped off bits on the surface of the puzzle, like damaging the actual image and artwork was, yeah, very uh, disappointing. So. Yeah, I do actually have another puzzle from them, very like by the same artists, very similar. So it's gonna be interesting to do that one. I'm kind of like not looking forward to it, <laughs> partly because it looks difficult and I'm guessing it's gonna be similar quality, but let's hope that one doesn't have as much damage, fingers crossed. So yeah, that's why that was the least favorite of the month. And then a favorite was, okay, this one here. Ugh. <laughs> Again, very heavy. So yeah, let's move you over. Okay, so this is by yeah by Yuyoji called In Me the Tiger Sniffs the Rose. Is that what it's called? I don't know, it's such a long, crazy name. Um, it'll be in the description box below. Anyway, despite it having issues like the false fits and you know the box art, box having no artwork really, I really enjoyed it. It was just such a really just a really luxurious special and different experience. It was my first time doing an acrylic puzzle like this or at all, I've never done one. And so it was like just a beautiful experience. And I loved how the pieces felt and the sound they made, like the sort of glass-like 
qualities of it and just the colors and the artwork yeah just really beautiful and it, I think I really do want to display this like I'm not going to take it apart I really like the frame I think it's really modern and cool and I love just the look of the puzzle like when I did a reel and photos I actually had it on the sideboard or display behind me and it just looked really cool so I definitely think I want to try and incorporate it if I re-jig re things behind me because I just think it's so beautiful and eye-catching and definitely very display worthy so yeah despite having a few issues really really loved it and would happily do more of their you know puzzle artworks um, sadly though Yoji has actually suspended their uh, like international sort of sales for now and are just focusing uh, like domestically within China but hopefully that might change again in the future so if so hopefully I get to work with them again because I just had a great time doing this and experiencing their acrylic puzzle it's so beautiful I, it definitely was a bit more tricky trying to choose my favorite because I was like I really like this one but I like the uni dragon one and I like the pintu and <laughs> even like the positive piece like there were a lot of really good puzzles this month but yeah this one went out because it's so shiny and pretty <laughs> I guess call me shallow but hey um, yeah so that is everything for the month of January in the comments below let me know what you thought of the puzzles that I did for the month of January and which one was your favorite if you enjoyed this video then make sure you show that like button some love and for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications by subscribing not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released but you're also helping this channel grow and you can find me over on instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content thanks so much and see you next time bye